Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, Mother, how do you like our peaceful life in the country? Oh, I haven't slept so well in years. Don't you like all the lovely rural noises, Mama? <laughs> the hammers and saws? <laughs> oh, well, we'll get used to that. Well, I hope it stops before we get used to it. <laughs> They ought to have that annex finished in another ten days. Can't even hear the birds singing with all the noises. And, Mama, we have the most singing birds you have ever heard. Well, I... I hope they sing better than that parrot you gave me. <laughs> Say, I hope Aunt Louise is taking good care of Solomon while you're here. And I hope he doesn't bring on her asthma. Aunt Louisa tells me that she tests negative to parrot feathers. And I test negative to Aunt Louisa. Oh, oh. Don't you like her? Oh, I like her very much. But I live in trembling fear that one day I'll open the front door and find that umbrella stand she's been threatening you with since you were three. <laughs> I wish somebody'd send us something, even just a letter. We'll get all of the letters we want very soon. I don't think anybody even knows we're here. Why, uh, I thought that's why people went to the country. So they'd be somewhere where nobody knows where they are. What was that? Plenty of people know where we are, and we'll be hearing from them very soon. Who? Oh, the bank, the tax collector, the plumber, and the electric light people, and Mr. Paradiso. Are they all going to write us letters? How nice of them. Mm -hmm. We'll be nice, too. We'll write them all letters back with little green checks in them. Oh, you mean bills. Those aren't letters. <laughs> well, they're most of the letters most people get. <laughs> David, why don't you write me a letter from New York, just so we can see if the mailbox works? Oh, it works fine. Well, you see how much that little mailbox can hold without flinching. The flinching is up to us. I don't know. If it weren't for Mitch, the electrician, and Billy, and the birds, I'd feel all by myself up here. You can, um, you can see how much we count around here, David. I don't mm. mean you. I mean people. There aren't any. Fancy that. We aren't people. And all of my life, I have calmly calmly proceeded under the assumption that we were. Well, you aren't other people. I can't be other people because I'm myself. I mean, I'm I. That still sounds silly. <laughs> I know it's right, but it still sounds silly. I'm I. Well, there, there must be loads of other people around here, even if we're not. We've been here practically four whole days, and we haven't met one. A one people? Not even one people. I'd say we've been kind of busy unpacking and putting things away and plugging up our ears so we don't have to listen to all the hammers all morning. Claudia, I'll bet in all the months you lived in that apartment in New York, you never met one person who lived in the same floor with you, did you? That is altogether different. <laughs> oh, sure, that's different. It was so easy to meet them that we never bothered to say hello. <laughs> but I thought in the country, neighbors want to meet their neighbors. Well, they'll probably come to call on us when they think we're settled. I think it's very unfriendly of us to wait. Everybody will think we're just plain old city people, very rude. <laughs> I think the custom is for the people who've been living here to come and uh, call on us first. I'm not that lazy. Claudia, I do not think you ought to walk around the countryside dropping in on other people's houses. Well, I really. think it would be very friendly of me. I think it would be nosy of you. <laughs> I thought when we had a party line I could find out... Everything about the other people on the line. Have you been listening to other people on the telephone? Not on purpose. That makes it all right, I suppose. Huh? You can't listen to it on purpose. It only rings when it's for us. But yesterday, I just happened well, to I'm hear... Not ha I'm not interested in what you just happened to hear, are you, Mama? I should say not. What did you hear? <laughs> I'll tell you after <laughs> David's gone. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and I thought your mother was a woman of superior character. She is, she is. Uh, Claudia, I don't want you to go snooping around our neighbor's houses like a chipmunk, you hear? David, don't you just love that little red house down the river road? I wonder who lives there. I don't know anything about it except it's none of my business. And did you notice the house with the funny black stripes on it? I wonder why they painted those stripes. The owner probably has a pet zebra. <laughs> Maybe he has. 
See what you miss, David, when you don't know your neighbors? Well, think how much they miss not knowing you. <laughs> I don't see them crying about it. Maybe they are. Uh, Claudia, please don't listen in on the telephone and don't try to meet our neighbors until they try to meet us. Oh, you're just like a man. All right, all right. I was just thinking about it. And my final word of advice, don't think. Well... Here goes the happy commuter. Goodbye, happy commuter. <laughs> I have 20 minutes to get to Eastbrook Station. Who is coming with me? I am. Good. I am. Good. Ladies, this way to the chariot. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Mommy, it's 2 o'clock. Really? Uh, you think I can't count? Only 4 hours and 18 minutes till David comes home. Well, it's time to put the suet pudding in the oven. Are we having suet pudding? No, but I can't think of anything else that takes that long to cook. Oh, Mama. Look through the window there. Where? Well, I don't see anything. There's a car. And what did you expect to see, an elephant? But it's stopping at our mailbox. <laughs> Mama, it's the postman. We must have some mail. I'm going right out to see who it is. Now, don't run, Claudia. The postman leaves the mail, you know. He, he just doesn't wave it at you. Hey! Hey! Hello! Hello there. I brought you your first letter. Hello, thanks. How'd you know we were here? The United States Post Department has a very, very good way of finding out these things. But you're a lady. Well, you're taking a little bit for granted, but I hope you're right. But I thought they were always men. Male men, I mean. I am a male woman, and please spell that correctly. I'm Claudia Norton. Hello, I'm Elvira Cook. Hello. I'm your male woman. How do you like living in the country? Oh, we love it. Been here since Friday, haven't you? Got well, here around 8 o'clock. Yes, but how do you know? Oh, we have ways of finding these things out. Do you come by every day? This is the first time I've ever seen you. Had no mail for you till now, and this one don't amount to anything. Just an advertisement from the lumber company. You do have ways of finding things out, don't you? When's the baby due? About June? Yes, end of... And Say, it's going to be a boy, isn't it? Well, I hope he'll look like your husband, Mrs. Norton. I hear tell he's a very good-looking man. Have you met Mr. Norton? Not exactly met him, but, well, Martha Lee Abbott, they live in that red house down the road. She saw you and Mr. Norton driving to the station yesterday. The, 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 the Abbotts live in that red house? Been living there four years. Moved in just about the time I took over this job for Mr. Cook. He's my husband, and when he went in the Army... Didn't he... I mean... Oh, he came back all right, but he couldn't get the job away from me. He has a little hardware store now. Here's his card if you need anything. Oh, thank you. You know, it's funny about men. When my husband brought mail around, you'd think it was the boringest job in the world. Says he don't understand how I have such a good time. Why, I think it'd be wonderful fun. Someday when you have nothing to do, why not ride around with me and meet the folks around here? That's what Martha Lee Abbott did when she first moved in. She did? Lovely girl, got three of the nicest children you ever want to meet. Two boys and a girl. Two boys? One seven and one nine, and has the sweetest little girl of three named Cynthia. Oh, what a pretty name. Mr. Abbott works up to Bridgeport at the aluminum company. Fine man, Mr. Abbott. I didn't know there was an aluminum plant in Bridgeport. Oh, they opened it during the war, and it's the biggest thing you ever saw. Mr. Abbott has a fine job there. But his boss is a fellow named McClellan, and sometimes he really tries to make life miserable for Mr. Abbott. And do you know, Mr. Abbott is just crazy about dogs, and he and Martha Lee have two of the sweet, sweetest German police dogs you ever saw. And they've been raising little puppies, and the other day, one of the little babies ran away. And they... Well, Claudia... That wasn't such a bad dinner. No, not bad at all. Well, don't sound so surprised, you two. I bought the meat in a store. It was such a nice store. Mm -hmm. And such a nice butcher. You talked and you talked and you talked and you talked. And talked and talked and yes. talked. Well, not that much, no. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you were with her, Mother. I certainly was. Heaven help me, Mama, I was. that is not fair. You said I drove much better today. Well, it uh, seems you have a new bad habit. Now you're driving too slow. <laughs> oh, can't please the woman. <laughs> you might almost call that a good habit, Mother. <laughs> no, not when it means dawdling outside people's houses, when it means just looking in a window. Mama, you, me. you look too. Well, there wasn't anything else for me to do now, was there? Oh, I'm so looking forward to meeting the Abbots. I'd love to see their dogs. Uh, 
who are the Abbots? Oh, didn't I tell you? No. I thought I told you. They're the people who live in that, that little red house. You saw their name on the mailbox. Well... Very, very observant of you. Martha Lee Abbott. Isn't that a nice name? It's a very nice name, but how do you know her first name is Martha Lee? Oh, we have a way of finding these things out. Uh-huh. Mr. Abbott works for the Aluminum Company. Did you know there was an Aluminum Company in Bridgeport? I didn't have the slightest idea that there was an Aluminum Company. Aluminum, aluminum, aluminum. Claudia. Yes, yes. Claudia. Yes. Have you been listening to the telephone when other people were talking? Ah, oh, I have not. Have I, Mama? No, David. She hasn't. Really. See, there. I don't know whether I should take Mama's word for it after what she said this morning. <laughs> How do you think police dogs and Great Danes get along together? The Abbots have the nicest police dogs. I should think Bluff would like to meet them. Oh, I get it. One of the Abbott dogs ran away and came down here the other day. Is that it, Mother? There hasn't been a dog in the place all day long, David. Claudia, have you been walking on the road? Well... Now, I ask you not to do that. Don't you realize that those police dogs can be very wild sometimes? Oh, I don't think he so, He might have David. bitten you. That's just exactly why I have told you time and time again. Darling, don't... I haven't been off the place once, except to go to the market. Just once. Then how do you know? And, and darling, listen, I forgot to tell you that Abbott's have the cutest little girl by the name of Cynthia. Isn't that a nice name, too? Mother, what's going on here? When I left the house this morning, Claudia didn't know one person on the river road. Now she not only knows all the people and all their dogs and all their ancestors and their descendants. <laughs> well, David, I'm, I'm just as surprised as you are. Oh, we have ways of finding these things out. Mm-hmm. What uh, ways do you have? Well, we got a letter this afternoon. Yeah? What sort of letter? An advertisement from the lumber company. Want to buy some lumber? I do not. I want to find out how you've become a gossip by remote control. I am not a gossip. I just opened the mailbox. And, David, you were perfectly right this morning. You'd be surprised how much that little mailbox can hold. Um, thumb, when you're thumb, at home thumb, doing the housework, thumb, thumb, thumb. is lunchtime simply a snatch-a-bite time, or do you make it a relaxing interlude? There's one way you can manage to add refreshment to lunch without taking a bit of trouble. And that's to open an ice-cold bottle of Coca-Cola. Coke goes with any food and makes even the sketchiest leftovers taste better. Try it and see whether you don't find the afternoon chores lighter when you lunch refreshed. Say, Mr. King, uh, right nice young girl, that Mrs. Norton. I hope you'll be bringing her a lot of mail. And not just bills, either. Oh, likes getting mail, does she? Well, most people do. But Claudia especially. Uh, what's she going to be doing with herself up here, uh, besides opening all her mail she ain't got yet? Oh, Claudia will keep busy. Claudia and David rarely ever have a dull moment. Uh, that's the same with Mr. Cook and myself. Why, just the matter of buying a dozen eggs. That's a very gay adventure with Claudia. Well, I can't say I ever get a kick out of buying a dozen eggs. Well, come around tomorrow, Mrs. Cook, and you'll get a big kick out of the way Claudia goes about buying one simple dozen country eggs. <laughs> I'll be there. So long, Mr. King. Bye, Miss Cook. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.